when I lost, you know, five guys in Vietnam, four from the mortar round, one from that, you know, died. Um, so that was, so we pulled back again, and the next day uh, we're going to go in again. And we were getting ready to go in, we heard three single shots come from the complex. So uh, Captain Hunt says, we're going to go in, we're all going to go on the side, and then we're going to sweep in the whole company. So my platoon led, and then uh, Captain Hunt uh, and the headquarters, and then the other two platoons. So like 100 guys are lined up. So we start to go into the complex, and there's no return fire at this point. But we just like, I mean, I, I tell you, it's just like a movie. We're setting fire to the bunkers. We're, we're dropping grenades. I'm setting fire to the hooches, dropping grenades in bunkers. And we're in maybe 10 or 20 meters, and I get a call on the radio saying they found Captain Vincent, the first command. So we held up, and I went down where he was. And the three guys who had captured the commander and the other guy were in a ditch with their hands tied behind them. They had been executed. Those are the three shots we heard that morning. So that was, you know, that was pretty rough. So we get into the complex, and they had left. We found some intel that actually said they knew when we were coming. They're going to lead back, you know, a bunch of guys to keep us pinned down while they got all this stuff out, which is exactly what they did. So we got into this complex, and, it, you know, there was the hospital complex, and uh, there were pigs and chickens and stuff like that. So you, you talk about control of guys. After a while, I mean, my guys are just running around shooting the pigs and the chickens. And, you know, I always said, you know, I'm so glad there weren't, like, a village, village there, you know, because I'm not sure I could have controlled them, because they just wanted revenge, you know. I mean, you hear those stories, and it's true. Luckily, it was just pigs and chickens, you know. So uh, we're in the complex for a day or so. Another company met us there. So there's two companies securing this complex, and did looking for all kinds of intel and stuff. And we're doing a little check around the perimeter, and I hear my point man say, so I found some graves. I'm like, oh, shit. Because if you say that, then you got to dig them up. Because Captain Hunt heard him say that. So he said, okay, take them up, see how they die. So he can claim them in the body count. Body count was a big thing over there. You know? So, I mean, this is a hospital complex. You would expect there would be some graves, right? right? So we dug up, there were like six graves. We dug up three of them. I had my medic check them over. Couldn't find any wounds on them. There were vines growing out of some of them. So I reported that to Captain Hunt. And I, the next thing I know, I hear him talking on the radio to the battalion commander. He said, yeah, we got six of them. So he gets up three. I said, sir, how, how can you tell me we killed six of them? We didn't kill anybody. Well, those graves you dug up. I said, yeah, but there were vines growing out of them. He said, well, it grows real fast here. I said, but there were no marks on them. They probably died of malaria or syphilis or who knows. He said, well, remember you said you called in artillery one day? I said, yeah. He said, concussion, that's what killed them. So, you know, I just wanted to take credit for the body count. Right. But, uh, but there was a lot of that that went on. I can tell you other stories about body count. But, but uh, so we stayed there another day or so, and then we left. Uh, came and went to, back to Vietnam, and I left the platoon maybe a week later and got the job as a civil affairs officer.